Welcome back to the channel. And on today's steak experiment, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Now, I love ribeyes, you all know that, and I also love everything bagels. So we're gonna marry those two together, and we're gonna make a steak seasoned in everything bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's. We're gonna do that in a side-by-side -side experiment versus a steak done just with typical salt and pepper, our usual reverse sear method. So stick around and see which one we prefer in the end in a side-by-side -side taste test. So we've got two beautiful USDA prime ribeyes here. We've got a ton of marbling in amongst the actual muscle fibers here. And so we know that's gonna render down beautifully over the course of our reverse sear cook. One of these, we're going in just with traditional salt and pepper. Season that up. Perfect. Now the other one, we're going in again with this everything bagel seasoning. Now this seasoning, I mean, what does it even have in it? We've got sesame seeds, sea salt flakes, dried minced garlic, dried minced onion, black sesame seeds, and poppy seeds. So there's salt and garlic, and a lot of people use salt and granulated garlic on a steak. So I actually think this is gonna pair pretty well. I, you know, we'll have to see in the end, but at least it's got a few ingredients that seem to make sense. So we'll get this on here. Get that flipped over on the other side. Perfect. Now we'll make sure the sides get seasoned up here nicely. Now we're gonna take our meat probes here. We're using our meter temp thermometers. These are Bluetooth temp probes that let us monitor the temp of our cook from our phone, which is great. Get that right into the middle of the steak in the thickest part of it. Do the same with the other one. Perfect. Now we're gonna let these rest for at least 40 to 50 minutes here and there's large salt chunks and even the granulated garlic chunks on here that I think are gonna take a little while for the moisture of the steak to just dissolve and make sure that internally seasons the steak. So again, we'll give this 40 to 50 minutes here to rest before we get these on the grill. So I've got the pellet grill fired up to 225. It's preheated. Now we're gonna get the steaks on. Get the first steak on and the second one. So now we're gonna fire up our meter app. We're gonna set up our cook here. Going in for a ribeye. We'll set this to be pulled off at 110 Fahrenheit. And then we'll get it in cast iron and get it ripping hot and build up that crust. Now we're just gonna monitor our temps here with the meter from the couch. All right, these steaks just hit 90 degrees. So we're gonna flip them and rotate them as well. Got the steak over here. Perfect. Now we'll let these guys go a little while longer until they hit an internal of 110. We just hit 110 internal in the steaks, so it's time to get them off the pit. Now we'll let these rest for 10 or 15 minutes while we heat up our cast iron pan so we can sear these off. So we've got the skillets on the grill here. All the burners are on high, so we'll get these preheating for 10 or 15 minutes until they hit a surface temp of about 500 Fahrenheit, and then we'll get the steaks on. All right, let's check in on these pans and how they've been heating up. So we're just gonna use our little thermopen here that's got an infrared reader. So we're at 520, 530, perfect. So we're gonna get a little bit of neutral oil, avocado oil. This also has a really high smoke point. So we'll get that all around the cast iron, both of these. Got that oil evenly around the pan here. Now we'll get our steaks in. First, we're gonna drop in this guy. And we'll do our same with our regular steak. Now we'll make sure there's really good connection between the steak and the cast iron, just to get that crust building up. So now we're gonna check in on these steaks there's the crust from the regular. Just look at that. That's looking really good. A 
and there's the everything bagel. So we're aiming for an internal temp here of 128 to 130. And we've got a little ways to go on the everything bagel steak here as well. It's pretty close. So we'll get this guy flipped one more time. Do the same over here. So we've just hit an internal of 128 here on the everything bagel steak. All right, we're gonna get both of these guys off. Just look at that sear. Just look at that. All right, we've got these steaks off the grill. They look absolutely fantastic. The crust on both of these is really incredible. And I'm actually surprised that frying this in the skillet afterward didn't actually burn any of the sesame seeds that were in that everything bagel seasoning. You can still see some really nice white sesame seeds in combination with the darker poppy seeds, but this is looking really, really good. So there's only one thing left to do here, and that's do a more thorough comparison. So the crust, you can hear the crust here. Great outcome. And pretty similar on the everything bagel steak too. So now let's carve in and see how these steaks turned out. So now there's just one thing left to do on this experiment and that's the taste test. So we'll cut a few cubes here, get a nice piece off of our regular steak. And you know what? I'm gonna try this one first. Mm. So that's the everything bagel steak. You can really taste the garlic. It's nice, it's well seasoned with the salt and it clearly absorbed into the steak. You can't really taste the sesame seeds or the poppy seeds in it. Maybe a little bit, but it adds a nice little nutty texture to it. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. I, I like it, I'm going in for another bite. Mm. Mm. Now you can see here, we got a beautiful medium rare across both of these steaks. A little bit of a gray band, but that's just from searing off the steaks in cast iron. But a really nice wide medium rare band right in the middle. So now we're going to go in for a regular steak. Oh. Well, that is good. Now, both of these steaks were absolutely phenomenal. I would ab I'd just demolish either one of them. Now, the, the main differences that you'd notice between the steaks was the garlic. That was really present on this one and a little bit of nuttiness from the seeds. But otherwise, it tasted a lot like a regular salt and pepper seasoned steak. I'm really, really impressed with that. I didn't think it would be so good. And if you're just looking for something to switch it up, get a little bit of a change, I'd really recommend you try that everything bagel seasoning. It was top shelf. So if you enjoyed this steak experiment, smash the like button below. It really helps our channel out on the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've got a seasoning that you'd like us to experiment with, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.